everyone's favorite planet in the solar system is of course Saturn. And that's because of its beautiful rings. But how did those rings form? And when we know how they form, can we actually determine if the planet Joule and KSP should have rings just like Saturn? First off, we have to learn a few things. Any object orbiting another experiences something called a tidal force. The closer something is to another planet or any other celestial object, the stronger these tidal forces are. Let's say you have some planet A and it has a moon called B that has a mass that's quite a bit smaller than A. As B moves along its orbit, any point of mass anywhere on B will experience a tidal force due to the gravity of A. At the same time, each point of mass on the moon B will be attracted by the moon's gravity. Knowing that the tidal forces become stronger the closer you get to the planet A, we know that there must be a point where the tidal forces on a point of mass on the moon become greater than the gravity of the moon on that same mass. This will result in the moon being ripped apart as the moon's gravity will not be strong enough anymore to hold itself together. And this is what forms a ring, just like Saturn. The point at which these tidal forces start to take over is called the Roche limit, and it can be calculated using this equation. D is the distance from the center of the planet to the point where things will be torn apart. R is the radius of the bigger planet, planet A, and this will be its density. And this is the density of a theoretical moon that will be orbiting the planet and that will be ripped apart in this case. First let's check whether this equation yields realistic results when applying it to Saturn. We assume that the density of our theoretical moon is about 1300 kilograms per cubic meter. This means it's probably a combination of ice and rock. Saturn's density is about 687 kilograms per cubic meter. When we plug these values in, we get a distance of about 1.97 times the radius of Saturn. Which is about right when you look at the pictures. Of course, the limit will be different for every object depending on its density. But this is just an example. The planets in KSP have similar gravity to their real world counterparts, but they are way smaller. And so the densities are way higher than would normally be the case. But let's see what happens when we apply these same equations to the moons of Joule. The values for the Roche limit for all of these moons ranged from 1.6 up to 1.35 times the radius of Joule. Leith, the closest moon, is at a distance of about 4.5 times the radius of Joule. So all the moons are quite a bit removed from the Roche limit of at the most 1.35 times the radius of Joule. So that means that Joule should have no rings. So the game is actually accurate in that respect. Not to worry though, because KSP2 is going to have multiple planets with rings, and it will be enough for people to enjoy. In the meantime, you could watch this video where I discuss why Lathe should not exist in its current form.